Uh, you can see it on Comcast uh, Channel 22 or Verizon Channel 33. The videographer for tonight's meeting is Rob. Check rctv.org for more information and for replay times. All right. The uh, first matter on our agenda. Brad, do you, have, do you have both applicants tonight? I do. Okay. I, I saw uh, Josh was on the special permit, so I didn't know if you were going to make him work all the time. I didn't know if you were going to make him work all the time. Uh, all right, so the uh, the first uh, case on the agenda is case uh, 1802. Uh, the Zoning Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing in the Selectman's Meeting Room at Town Hall 16 Lowell Street, <coughs> Reading, Massachusetts. On Wednesday, February 21st, 2018 at 7 p.m., on the applicant of attorney Josh Latham on behalf of Vincent and Kimberly Shanley, pursuant to Mass General Laws Chapter 48, Section 9, for a special permit under Reading Zoning Bylaws Section 532 and 547 to construct an addition to the existing single family dwelling and to create an attached accessory apartment on the property located at 32 Whitehall Lane in Reading, Massachusetts. Uh, I will dispense with the reading of the abutters list, except to say that the abutters were notified, as were the appropriate boards and committees and commissions and departments in daytime government, members and associate members of the ZBA, as well as the related planning boards of the surrounding communities. Testimony given before this board is taken under oath, so if you think may, you may want to speak on this case, please stand and raise your right hand. I swear that the testimony given by me before this board will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Responses I do. I do. Attorney Latham, the floor is yours. Thank you. My name is Brad Latham. For the record, I'm here on behalf of Vincent and Tim Chandley. Uh, they apologize for not being here themselves about the state. Uh, this relates to uh, 32 Whitehall Lane. Uh, the Chandleys have owned the property for over 10 years. Uh, they seek to put a small addition on the back of the property and a single car garage next to it as a fixture to the dwelling uh, to create an accessory apartment. Uh, this would be for Vince's parents. Uh, the parents lived in Reading for a few years and uh, they went to Florida. Uh, the father had a heart condition and wants to get back and be able to be with his family. Uh, and so therefore they'd like to have this addition made so that they could, uh, the parents could live with them in the property. The addition is unobtrusive. Uh, the property is in an S15 district. Uh, the lot is about 5,000 square feet larger than is required in that district. I'd like to, if I could, walk through the uh, elements uh, that are required for the special permit. Uh, the first requirement is that the, um, the plan must show the proposed interior exterior changes and the plans are submitted with the package. Hopefully we'll, we'll do that to your satisfaction. Next is that the uh, accessory apartment for the gross floor area not to exceed the lesser of 1,000 square feet or one-third of the gross floor area of the principal dwelling. The calculation is listed uh, on the plan submitted, but basically the current gross area is 2,979 square feet. One-third of that is 993 square feet. The proposed addition is 991 square feet, so it falls within the limit as required by that section. Uh, at least one of the owners of the lot containing both the principal single family dwelling and an accessory apartment shall reside in either the accessory apartment or the principal dwelling. Uh, Vincent and his wife Kim are going to continue to reside in the home. Uh, they own the property and will continue to do so. Uh, any uh, modification that must have the appearance of a single family dwelling. As you can see from the front of the property, uh, the entrance ways stay the same. Uh, there's nothing really being added there that would uh, make it appear to be other than a single family dwelling. The entrance to the accessory apartment is off the uh, sides behind the main building, behind the garage. Uh, the building inspector required that there be two of those, so there's one on each side, these two on the west of each side. Thank you. This is uh, Peter Sandorsi, who's the architect. When I get through, I'm going to ask him to explain the drawings, if you would. Uh, all stairways to the property entrance to an accessory apartment um, uh, located on the second and third floor shall be enclosed. There are no entrances. They're all first floor entrances uh, to this property. 
Uh, where two or more entrances already exist on the front of the facade, uh, you cannot add a third one. Well, there's no third entrance being entered. As they say, they're on the side and the behind the building. Uh, all motor vehicles owned and maintained uh, must be in a driveway or garage. The proposal is to have a single car garage, which really just an expansion of the current garage. Uh, they only have one car. Uh, the driveway itself is, still has the same opening that exists on uh, the street, uh, so that's not changing either. Uh, both the principal and single family dwelling and accessories shall connect to the public water and sanitary sewer system, which they do and will continue to do. Uh, jumping now, uh, so the other section doesn't relate to this, that deals with a freestanding additional building. Uh, however, general lot coverage, uh, the zoning bylaw allows 25% of the lot to be covered. This proposal only has 13.2% covered. It meets all setback requirements. Going to the general accessory building uh, section, uh, it says an accessory building should not be permitted within a required front yard. Uh, this is not in a required front yard. So that, uh, what I read, are the requirements uh, for a special permit. And Peter, what if you might uh, put up and explain uh, the changes being proposed? Right while he puts that up, I'd like to, if I could, read highlights from a letter from Vincent Sr. Uh, to the board uh, requesting your uh, permission. He recites simply that he's lived in town for a number of years. Uh, when he had a hard operation, he now is rethinking his living conditions, wants to be uh, closer to his family. Uh, and uh, after conversations with his son and daughter-in-law, they've invited him to join them. Uh, and the addition relates to that, and he requests your favorable action uh, on the uh, on the application. Thank you. Peter, if you begin that part of explaining the changes, we'll appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Vince. You might want that for the file. We have it in the zero. Trade? Yeah, we we'll do a trade. Oh, there's an extra one like this. Too. We've got one. Yeah, very good. This is, this is what you uh, all have in front of you, but what we tried to do is do an addition that matches the um, feel of the existing house, which is the center and it's colonial. Um, it currently has a connecting uh, breezeway. We're also using that space above. Uh, at the second floor here, we're sharing it. Some of the space is given to the main house in the form of a master bathroom and a walk-in closet. And then the area over the garage becomes um, the in-law. So as Brad has said, you come in this, uh, this is their um, parking bay in the garage. They walk down a walkway. And if I can switch the plan. Uh, that's our square footage calculations, uh, which were requested by the building department. But they come down a walkway. They, they have a little covered porch uh, for their side entry, a small lab. They can also enter from the garage. They walk into the living dining area, a small kitchenette a set of stairs uh, that goes up to their sleeping area above uh, which is here and comprises a bathroom a sleeping area and a closet the call of the connector area which is in the middle there belongs to the main um, residence and it is a walk-in closet laundry uh, bathroom shower situation it connects to the master uh, bedroom <coughs> they also wanted it so the family could use it as an additional door there for the family, but th this represents the in-law over the um, garage area. Tried to keep the roof lines very similar to what was there, and so it looks like it could have always been there. Like that. Was the second doorway, um, so the breezeway, is that there? I went by the house a couple of times. Yes, it's it's there. Like it's in the picture we're on the assessor's plan. Yeah, it's there. I see it. So it comes into a, um, to a small deck on the first floor. And it stays that way. We, we've proposed, initially actually, we proposed them having a connection inside the building inspector yeah. suggested we, we remove it, which we did. But this also gives them access. The old yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. The old one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
so as far as that goes, no change to the front of the house at all in that area, just in addition to the bay. Right. And, and then in the back elevation this the living area of the uh, in-law is or the accessory apartment is one story it's the bed in the bathroom that are up above and that's that's just what this room is showing the uh, shed dormers that allow us to get the headroom and then the, the lower shed Cupola just because we're not in that. So I'll give it a little more charm on the end there. Yeah. Do you want to go over your calculations on your. Uh... Sure. So, in, in the existing house, we were able to use um, the finished section of the walkout basement which comprises 578 square feet. Uh, that is actually the basement. So you come down the existing stairs and this area is finished. Uh, this is actually uh, full glass, you know, walks out to the backyard. So that's the area that we took to the basement, not the utility parts, not the unfinished part. <clears throat> then on the first floor, we're showing all of the space that is now the cone hill, the dam, and um, the breeze of uh, this connector now to the deck. And that gives us uh, 1,215 square feet. Second floor is all of the existing colonial and what we're creating for the new master bathroom. And that gives us 1,186 square feet. It gives us 2,979 square feet. And we're um, allowed to build up to 1,000 square feet or 25%, I believe, whichever is lower. Mm -hmm. And um, when we do our calculation for the proposed uh, accessory apartment, first floor is 525 square feet, which is this area. And then you go up to the area above the garage, which is this area, and that comprises an additional 466 square feet, giving us 991 square feet. The first floor. Go back to the first floor. Yeah. Uh, first floor, 525 square feet. Yep. Um, includes the bathroom. It doesn't include that. Is that an open deck or something? This this is an open porch. S Which is not included. Not included because it, it by reading these the requirements is open spaced outside not finished not enclosed does it have a deck does it have a roof over it it does have a roof over it just most that, of the version okay. of the yeah. is that from the the dormer more or less over uh, the roof line itself uh, from the back so so this low roof line which is coming along which is a hip roof just completes the corner and goes over that entry porch so that's all one story roofing well we the reason I asked that is um, we've had difficulty through the years of people starting off off with open decks open yeah. decks became something over the uh, coverage of the deck and then the walls went up yep. so now it becomes inclusive in the um, living space and that would to me that would totally put you way over so well what, what I think I would suggest that if we're concerned is just let's just cut it back so it actually just covers where the entry door is which which I think even in the in the residential. Well, the, the stoops, right? If, if it's a stoop, it's one thing. If it's a, Let's see if you're, you're talking about what. So it's actually right here. This is the this is the piece of roof. Right. Mm -hmm. This is the, the ten inch column. This would be the exterior slab. Here's the door and the window. Right. There's no walls or screening or nothing there. It's just no, no, no at the present time. No, but I mean the, the problem has not necessarily been with the original people who put on open decks. It could be somebody who sells the property down the road once or twice, and then it becomes an issue. So, 
That's why I was just looking at it. If it gives the board comfort in addition to imposing a closer condition in the special permit, if you required something to be recorded uh, where someone acknowledged that uh, they would not be able to add on without coming back to this board, that would certainly be satisfactory. There's a public record that way um, as well as any other way you want. Okay. Well, I mean, we're, we're stamping the plans. That's I know. Right. I mean, and, I, and, and I look at it, we, we, we're. We're here at a public hearing tonight on plans that are presented to us and on something that's going to be built this coming year, this coming construction season, not in something that could be built 10 years down the road. I agree with you, John. It's been done. But if that's the case, then the people have to come back that are going to enclose that, I assume, go to the building department, get a permit, and hopefully at that time, yeah, if there is an issue, it would then come back to us. Yeah. We don't worry about something that's 10 years down the road or that could possibly happen. Yeah. Well, we can, you know, we can talk about it. We can talk it. Yeah. about it. Yeah. All right. Um, typically, we open the, uh, the session up to any comments or questions. We've already heard a couple from... Uh, board members and we typically take those in order we've gone a little bit out of order but those were helpful questions to get answered for the general good of the board Glenn too here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, yeah I was gonna read that into the record sure. too um, yeah so before we start we'll start with you Nick uh, sure. but before we do I'm gonna read in a uh, memo dated February 20th 2018 from Glenn Redmond uh, regarding case 1802 uh, addressed to me, uh, ZBA chairperson, I've reviewed the revised construction plans dated January 24, 2018 for 32 Whitehall Lane in Reading, Mass. for the proposed addition in the accessory apartment. The proposed addition to the existing single family is in compliance with sections 532 and 547 for the purposes of creating an accessory apartment. The final construction plans will conform to the requirements of the state building codes prior to the issuance of the required building permit, I would recommend at this time that the special permit be granted. So I wanted to make that part of, uh, of the record. Uh, Nick, any yeah. questions, comments? Uh, I don't have any questions. I thought the plans were pretty complete. Um, the explanation of the finished basement made sense. Uh, I guess my only comment would be, um, and I know we touched on this last time, but the one-third of the principal residents, we're not counting the original residents. We're taking the additions at, into, in part in that calculation. Correct. All right. I have no comments or other questions. All right. Thanks. Robert. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, I, I think as Attorney uh, Latham stated, it's an S-15 district, the property. Uh, the property as it sits now meets all zoning requirements. The lot and the dwelling meets all offsets. And as it's proposed, it's all within the building envelope that's required uh, with offsets uh, there from the property lines. And it appeared to me going through uh, on section uh, 5.4.7 accessory apartment that the applicant met all the requirements uh, of that and uh, I don't have an issue with that. Uh, one question I did have and it's in my notes here, and, and I, don't, I forget where I read it now, but is Conservation Commission going to be involved with this at all, Brad? Do you know? Uh, I thought I read it in one of the statements in here that uh, you would have to go to, oh, yeah, Conservation Commission approval is conservation approval required. I see that under. Uh, the 132 tells yeah. me. January 30, 2018 from yeah. Glenn. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, do you know anything on that? I don't know offhand, but if it's jurisdictional, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, and, and to be honest with you, looking at the plans, I didn't see where the wetlands were in the area, but no. obviously if that's the case, they, they may have to do that then. Uh, so other than that, I, I don't have any issues with the problem. I think this is, is fine. You won't be able to see anything from the front of the uh, building at all. The apartment's going to be built at the back. Uh, they're putting an addition onto the garage, I assume, for the third car there, which would be for the uh, uh, applicant's uh, parents. That's correct. Uh, on that. 
but by right I think they would be allowed to put a, an extension on that garage anyway uh, for themselves even if they wanted to and uh, so that's about it I, I, I'm, I'm satisfied with the application right. thank you Robert John, anything to add to your earlier questions? Uh, no, the, I, I, I spotted the same thing that Robert did on conservation approval. I, I didn't see it when I went by. No. And, but I, I don't know that, so that would have to be taken care of, Brad said, uh, down the road anyways before you get the building permit. Um, the rest of the, uh, the rest of it, I, you know, I, I, I can't see where... <coughs> I can't see where anything uh, on the requirements for the accessory new accessory apartment uh, has not been covered here. Um, the calculations I, I usually like to go over anyways so and take a look at um, from what is from what is here. Um, I don't see any anything that I can question. Um, one. Part that you mentioned, uh, that Robert mentioned, the third uh, garage, um, the ratio for units is one and a half to one. Uh, so that meets that requirement, even if it weren't that. And they have plenty of space out front to park additional vehicles too. Um, I think the tie-in was uh, was good, and uh, the fact that you really don't see other than uh, that second door uh, in the front, uh, I don't see anything that uh, would even indicate that that was an accessory apartment. So, I mean, in, in that case, uh, it meets the intent and purpose of the bylaw, so I don't have a problem. All right, great. Thank you, John. Sai. I don't really have a problem at all. I think the, uh, the design of the thing, the, the way you went about doing it, I think was well thought out and uh, you fit something very nice into this property that does fully comply this conservation thing I mean Glenn put it in there before and then he did not put it into this memo yeah. so maybe you know in his own mind that really not a, an issue yeah. okay and if it becomes one then that's something down the road the only thing I would caution you on though is that if someplace down the road while you own the property if you want to enclose that porch on the side you're going to have to come back and that probably will be a difficult thing to resolve uh, but uh, at the moment we're approving something that you've presented tonight and I don't have a single problem with it Great. thank you sir uh, I have and maybe it's just a point of clarification uh, looking at your at the, the plot plan you submitted versus the drawings that just you just went over uh, the, I guess, let's call it the proposed square footage of the entire building. You call it existing on here, but that's with the addition. Comes out to 2979 square feet, whereas, and maybe I'm re reading this wrong, uh, on the plan up in the upper left-hand corner, you come up with 2,654 square feet on the plot plan. <coughs> Am I, is it, where am I, where's the 300 square foot difference? Am I missing that somewhere? Or is there a discrepancy? There's a discrepancy. I, I don't know why, why there's a difference. Okay. And it's intention to be the architectural drawing. Uh, okay. So the engineer, the surveyor who prepared this, maybe this misread it. Okay. Uh, and you understand that that plane mm. Is going to get recorded, presuming we approve this, and it's got the incorrect mm -hmm. dimensions on it. If the board would see its way to have the condition that the this plan be made to conform to the architectural calculations before being recorded, um, we we'll certainly do that. Uh, except then I have to stamp that. Well, I, I see, David. Excuse me for the, that they, they do count the existing shed, existing deck, etc. Uh, in with the square footage for the whole house. They, they it's right. an and then they yeah. add the proposed additions. Yeah. And this, if I'm reading this correctly, the 2979 
is the whole area, including the proposed addition. Well, so it's about 300 square foot difference. Difference. There, I, I didn't go through those numbers. Um, so, yeah. And so I just want to make sure we're being consistent. Typically, mm. Brad, it's not the board's practice to issue a decision uh, with a without a plan being submitted part of the application. So we, you know, I understand mm -hmm. from a time management perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you typically would like this to. to the condition for a plan that conforms to the the architectural, uh, you know, the elevation architectural drawing. Uh, but but again, I've got to stamp and sign it. Right. So. Yeah, I, it's. I think we'd have to go through here and maybe do some addition, subtraction to check it. But well, I mean, I, I think that, you know, John Sullivan. Typically, what he does—that's the well, right. But but it's been represented footprint. from the applicant right. that that these elevation drawings covered, not right. the, not the plot plan. Right. That that the correct representation of the Easy. actual square footage is the elevation drawing, right. and not the plot plan. And where they where there's a discrepancy, and both of them get stamped, that discrepancy presents right an ongoing issue. Uh, and an inconsistency that I'm not comfortable with. Mm -hmm. um, if the board wants to, we could continue it and they could submit a uh, corrected plan uh, for the board before it votes. I think I, I would prefer to do it that way. That way we have it all at once and that's consistent with the board practice, Brad. Um, you know, it would be very quick. Um, and we'll take a look at the calendar. I mean, we're back in what? In two weeks, anyway. That's yeah, 40B. You know, I wouldn't want to. Only. I mean, we couldn't put them on at the beginning of that. Although I'd have to come in for that, for the for just to, to sign the decision, and then, mm -hmm. and then, excuse myself and walk out. But I would, I would do that. I mean, literally, it's. It would take, presuming he comes back with a plan that matches this, it would take less than five minutes to open and close and stamp and approve it. Um, that's what, March 7th? Mm -hmm. Is that okay, Brad? March 7th? Fine. All right. Uh, all right, well, before we go any further, I typically would open the, uh, open the hearing up to any public comment. If there's anybody in the audience that would like to speak to this application, uh, please raise your hand, wait to be recognized. Uh, and if you're going to speak to it, you would uh, uh, rise and identify yourself by name and address uh, and also be sworn because Brad was the only one that was sworn in. <laughs> Not sworn at, yeah. sworn in. <laughs> <laughs> and anybody like to speak? Sir, you'll need to be uh, sworn in. So well, please, before, before anybody that wants, wants to speak, yeah, it anybody, doesn't hurt. Anybody, anybody else that you think you like might to want to, this, please stand. Please stand. Please yeah, rise. please stand. It doesn't hurt. <laughs> and if you don't speak, you don't speak. So I put on my resume. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I swear that the testimony given by me before this board will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Your response is, I do. I do. I do. Thank you. You asked to be recognized first, sir. Please identify yourself by Thank name you, and address for the Paul secretary. Paul 34 Sherwood Road. I abut in the back of the property. Uh, I'm just trying to, this is the first time I've seen the plans. I'm trying to wrap my head around. Are they going up above the breezeway and the garage and then adding another garage to the side? And how far back are they going to extend the addition? The addition goes back 12 feet from the back of the garage. 12 feet from the back of the garage? The new barn. So all told, about 14 from the, what you see now. So basically it's going behind the original garage that they have. That is correct. <coughs> oh, that's right. Yep. Thank you. No Thank you. No that, that's all saying just the way it is now. Thank you, sir. The certified plot plan indicates that from the edge of the proposed addition to the back property line is 91 feet. Well, but that may change based upon their yep. new dimensions. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the other folks that want to be heard, please. Yeah. Ma'am, thank you. Uh, I was wondering. I'm sorry, ma'am, please, your, your name and address, if you would, please. Oh, uh, Maria Jolimat, 12 White Hall Lane. Thank you so much. And um, he runs his own business out of his house. And 
<coughs> he has this huge truck that he plows and does everything with, garden work, and he leaves it out on the driveway and sometimes out in the street. You know, uh, why would she have to have an extra uh, garage if he would, uh, I, did, I didn't know they were really allowed to leave it there. Because there's people around the corner and they had to, they were told they couldn't leave any of their equipment in the yard. Uh, you mentioned it's a, it's a, a, what is it, a pickup truck with a plow on it? It's a what? You said they, they leave a, a plow in the drive, parked in the driveway. Uh, the great, one of those great big trucks, like the town would drive. Okay. To plow. And they plow the streets and for people and stuff and do yard work. And they leave it in the front, in their driveway. Which I, I thought was illegal, but I don't know. Maybe it's changed by now. But uh, they wouldn't have to put up an extra uh, garage. And, and since they run their business out of there, maybe uh, they can run it someplace else. Thank you. Uh, sir, did you have something to add? Bill and Isaac, 17 Whitehall. Thank you, sir. I didn't hear, but I may have said it, but was there a kitchen facility with this addition? It's a small, very small. There's <laughs> one room of living. There's a stairway that goes up underneath that area. There's a run of cabinetry that has a sink and dishwasher and a small stove. And a small refrigerator. Under counter, I think. So there's uh, the governance for this not to become a two family residence. I mean, this is just an accessory. It's a matter of semantics, sir. Oh, the, <laughs> the the portion of the zoning bylaw that they're seeking relief under allows property owners that meet the performance standards that the applicant went through mm -hmm. to add in a separate living space complete with a kitchen that meets those dimensional requirements that they were talking about, certain square footage. Um, so it needs to maintain the appearance of a single family house but there are two dwelling units in that house for the purpose of having an, access, an accessory apartment, and that's what the bylaw is set out to, to allow uh, homeowners to do. So if it looks correct, it's okay. If it looks correct and it measures correct, yeah. and it meets all the building code standards and the building inspector's uh, needs, uh, and meets the bylaw section that uh, that we've just outlined, um, then they would be entitled to the relief that they seek. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, in relation to what this gentleman was just saying, so if the Shanley's in the future sell this house to someone, could they rent out the addition as a separate apartment? Is that something that could possibly happen with the new addition? And you know, the neighborhood, if you're familiar with it, which I'm sure you are, it's all single family homes. Um, how would, is there any bylaw that Reading has that would prevent that? Or? Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it has to be, there is, once a, a special permit for an accessory apartment is granted, the only requirement is that the owner of the house has to live in one of the two units. In this case, they're proposing that a family member reside in a typical in-law apartment situation. But your question is well taken in that there is, there is no control in the bylaw for what that homeowner, whoever that homeowner may be, now or in the future, does with that accessory apartment, whether they house a family member there or someone other than a family member there. There is no uh, control in the bylaw for that. I'm sorry. Um, so, my next question to follow that up would be: um, Could are you going to open up a can of worms where anybody can, as long as it looks like a single family home, add an addition and then rent it out to someone, even though they're not a family member? Is that what's going to happen down the road? Or the how do we prevent that? Because I'm sure everyone knows we have a really gorgeous neighborhood, and you know, I hate to have all these families turn into two family homes and it would be a mess. Your, your point is again well taken. Uh, when the zoning bylaw was amended, 
several years ago to uh, add in uh, some streamlining, if you will, of the uh, accessory apartment section of the bylaw. Uh, we did discuss your specific concern and won't this now result in a proliferation of people coming forward and wanting to do this? Well, there are two sides to that. The population is growing and the generational uh, need for accessory apartments is growing such that we would want to foster a community where families are encouraged to allow aging family members or parents or children to move in with them and provide uh, an accommodation for them. On the flip side to that, you're absolutely right. We want to uh, count and track how many of these applications come forward so that we don't, well, so that we notice whether or not this happens with increasing regularity. Uh, I can tell you in the past year and over probably a year and a half that I've been chairman, uh, we've had, I think, three, two or three, this might be the third or fourth application for an in-law apartment in a year, and we don't, I don't necessarily think that would be considered a unreasonable number of, of requests for an in-law apartment, but um, the town does and will track the number of, in, of accessory apartment applications that come in because there are there is a process whereby somebody doesn't even need to come before this board if they have the existing space in an existing and building envelope and they meet those dimensional requirements they can go and get a, a permit at the counter without having to come to ZBA. So I'm sure the town is keeping track of the number of these applications and uh, the concern is well taken that it quote unquote not get out of hand. Um, I'm sorry. So I'm not necessarily against in-law apartments. It would be turning a, a single family house into a two family house where the owner is renting it to a non-family member. Is that something that could happen down the road with this? Yes. 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 Okay, so I just wanted to get that on the record that that is something that could possibly happen should they sell their property and someone else buys it and rents it to someone who's totally not a family member. That's correct. Okay, thank you. Now there are some safeguards built into this because it's an accessory apartment you did hear under the requirements that it can occupy no more than one third of the total um, square footage of the, of the principal, residence. principal residence and consequently uh, it has to meet all of the requirements as if it were a two-family structure two means of egress um, which is the biggest thing. Um, there's a lot of building code that comes into this um, because it's over garage, it needs to meet, meet special requirements for the safety of the people who are living above it. There are a lot of safeguards built into this. The only one that's intangible is that if you were wanted to do this in your, partic in your particular home, you could do that if you meet all of the I think there's eight or nine requirements that you have to meet. The only thing that we that can't be brought into this is who can you rent, who can you lease, who can you give the accessory apartment to. to. If, it, if, it, if I were living in a big house, I may want to take the accessory apartment for myself and let my children live in the rest of the house or rent it out to somebody else. There's no way to control that. Just the fact that it is basically a two-family, but it's really not a two-family in its size. So it's not four and four or five and five. Uh, it's really like three and six. It's only one-third. Could only be two bedrooms, and it, you really it. you can only have two bedrooms in this accessory apartment. I mean, there's a lot of safeguards here. The town was interested in the changing population. Unfortunately, we're getting older. At least I am, uh, and things change. Your children, <laughs> this generation of children usually come back and live with their parents when something goes wrong or they trying to get a head start or whatever. We had no way of doing that for 
separation of the of the two kind of family units. So this was intended to do that. Also, it brings us up on affordable housing aspects of it, uh, which we are always facing, which is what we do 40 Bs for. But no housing in general. There's always a need for more housing. Right, I know. Just one quick point for clarification for me. But this is, a, I think it's only as a single family residential neighborhood. Is there something that a footnote in the zoning that then says, and by the way, therefore you can't have a commercial enterprise within that area? And I can see the altruistic technology addition. Oh, yeah, let's bring the kids in, let's build a apartment to be on great stuff. It's all wonderful and Christian, so to speak, or it's, it's a good thing to do, get that client. <laughs> but I, I'm thinking, is there something that guards us against, uh, like Airbnb or some other commercial enterprise that's more prominent for a property like this might be not allowed by the zoning? If it is allowed, it's something else. But I'm thinking single family residential. That's not allowed. Uh, so we're getting a little outside of the of the application that's before us. But to be responsive to your to your question, uh, the zoning bylaw has a table of allowed uses in residential districts, and there are certain uses that are allowed in residential districts by right, and there are certain uses that are not allowed in residential districts at all, regardless of whether or not you want to apply to this board or another board or committee <laughs> to try to get. Uh, a use permitted in those areas. So, to answer your question, there are regulations on what can and cannot be done in in a residential district. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I'm sorry, sir. Uh, you have to be sworn in order to speak before the board today. So, I, I can appreciate your your desire to speak, but. But we, we went through it a little bit earlier. If you, if you yes. want to speak, you have to be sworn. If uh, I swear the testimony given by me before this board will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, the responses I do. I do. Your name and address, sir? Ken Hale, 26 Whitehall Lane. Thank you, sir. And I button on the left side. Sure. I just have a question on what was suggested about the plot plan versus the architectural plan. Yes, sir. I didn't understand how it gets resolved. Good question, and we had started down that road with, with the applicant. So, uh, there is a discrepancy in numbers on the two documents that the, two drawings that the applicant has submitted in support of their application. The number of square, total square foot on this document differs from the number of total square foot on this document. The applicant, in response to my inquiry on that, has advised that the total square footage on this document is the correct square footage. And so then they have to go back to the engineer that drew up this document and work together with the architect that drew up this document and come up with documents that match. They will be allowed to do that and we will reschedule this hearing for a date, I think we said March 7th, for them to come back in with a drawing that matches, two drawings that match because uh, presuming that in all other respects this board is prepared to grant this application, uh, we want to make sure that the documents are correct that support that application. Yes, sir. Follow up. Wouldn't the plot plan be historically the plan? Or is it done every time? That's, that's the part I'm sort of not getting. This is a Plus newly, taxes this, this is a new plot plan. This is not a, so when you buy a house, so do with your, your bank will do a plot plan for you and a lot of people keep those in their files. Those are a surveyor walks around the property with a tape measure for the purpose of, of assuring the bank that they're lending you money on a piece of property. Not technically binding in a legal proceeding. Um, so what many homeowners and applicants do is, especially in this case where they're going to be adding to an existing property. They've done a new plot plan that shows both the existing uh, dimensions of the residence and a new one. So this isn't, uh, this was one that was done specifically for this application and is new, dated January 11th of 2018. But there was no existing plot plan before? Uh, that would have been the record? We don't know. We, we don't have it in our record. It's not, it's not part of the record for this application. All right. Um, I think Brian is going to 
ask for a continuation. Yes. Uh, so, 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 Brad, if we're if we're gonna we're gonna con we'll just because I don't want to drag you out fast on on March seventh, uh, the opening of the uh, of a new forty B is scheduled here. It's in this room, isn't it? You may want to rethink that. Yeah. But um, might be changed. It'll be well. It'll it'll. There's a hearing date on March 7th. That's the next hearing date available to you. Uh, it's about two weeks out. Uh, what I would propose to do is have you request a continuance to that date, uh, and we would, for a lot of reasons, have you come in and hear your case first before we open the 40B, because I imagine all things being equal, uh, it'll be quick, mm. uh, and have you heard on that day. Is that okay? I appreciate that. We'll make sure that we get the correct plan to you in advance. It's okay. Uh, the applicants requested a continuance for uh, March 7th. Uh, we don't need a vote on it. So moved. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, we should. Yeah, all right. Yeah, 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 yeah we, we should. Yeah, we should. We should. We should. We, we should. do. Okay, yeah. Robert, move. John, I'll second. second. All those in favor? All right, five zero zero. We're continued to uh, Wednesday, March 7th. Thank you for your time. Thanks very much. Thank you, everybody, for your time and patience. So the hearing's been continued to Wednesday, March 7th, to allow them to revise the plans in conformity with their application. A new hearing date will be posted. The hearing is closed, sir. I'm sorry. What's that? I think this issue that we discussed now is going to be picked up on the building inspector. And it came in for the permit. Oh, the building permit. What do you mean? The discrepancy? Yeah. Kristen, just let folks know that we, we're going to add. I, I meant it would be really quick. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm. You know, unless unless the new plans require a whole revision of the application and calculations regarding the square. Feet Actually, you know, we could uh, we could uh, bring them in um, depending upon where it is. If it's here, we can go into the next room, do it, and then come back here for the uh, 40B. If it's over at the, uh, the center, uh, I know there's a, a little anti room there that we could do it quickly in. Yeah, you can figure it out. Yeah. I mean, like I said, I imagine. Yeah, it's a pain in the neck for you a little bit, isn't that too? Uh, I've just got to come in for that. You've got to come in for that yeah, one. No, I'm, I mean, uh, the, other, the other option was to do it at the end of March, and that's, you know, we want to try to get them in quick. Try to get them in quick. Yeah. Yeah, I'll come in for yeah. 10 minutes and then, <laughs> and then, and then leave, leave the rest Leave us with the... Well, you'll, be, you'll be paid accordingly. Yeah, yeah, the pay doesn't go up, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. All right. Good on that one. All right, next on the agenda is a request uh, regarding whether a modification to the uh, Schoolhouse Commons 40B at 172 Woburn Street is major or minor, substantial or insubstantial, um, such that uh, we can make that determination tonight for um, for the applicant. Um, you know, the hearing on the matter is closed. The decision was issued. Uh, and they've come in. They want to make a few changes to the project. So go ahead, Brad. Have at it. Thank you. And the Chancellor Chair indicates the request for the board to determine an insubstantial change. Uh, a letter was submitted January 24th outlining the nature of the changes. Uh, basically, uh, there's a shed at the back of the building now, and it's uh, the plan is to extend it 11 feet, uh, the same distance to each side of the entranceway. Uh, that would allow 
the electrical uh, facilities to be inside the building and allow inside bicycle storage. That's the purpose of expanding that. <coughs> With that, uh, is the request to uh, move the uh, air conditioning condensers uh, to be on the top of the, uh, the shed at the back. Uh, they would be shielded uh, by a fencing, a solid uh, fencing, with a heavy vinyl or some sort of a composite material around that. Uh, the condensers would not be seen from the ground outside that area. <coughs> By doing that, that also allows the transformer to move from the back of the site near the dumpster area to the side of the building, uh, which is, uh, I think, from a electricity perspective, is a better way. So those are the three changes in requesting. The expansion of the width of the shed at the back, uh, for the reasons stated, uh, having the uh, condensers for air conditioning being on top of it, and then moving the transformer forward on the site. First, first question, Brett. Is the uh, material that you said is a vinyl type, is that a sound absorbent material as yeah, well? Yeah, it, would, it would be, and it could be if that's a condition, um, to have that be a bathroom. I'm, I'm not sure if the, it's, a, it's a, like a concrete composite they make uh, that they plan the architect said they'd use around that. Because, because by, raising, by raising that onto the roof, um, you're you're pushing it out further uh, to the neighbors, and that that could be a an issue down the road. That, that's why they uh, they propose that not just to visually uh, obscure it, but also to be a, a sound baffling device. And it could also be a requirement that the uh, the mouse have to be inspected and replaced periodically. I understand that's the other part. If you don't take care of these, they can vibrate, and that can create a certain noise. So that could be a condition as well. Uh, that those be uh, inspected yeah i think we'd want to make sure that those, those conditions are met <coughs> that would affect also the people who are living in the uh the building too. exactly yes rmld weigh in on the pad yet i haven't heard <laughs> they want to they want to make sure there's access and it's where they want it and right right that that may be behind us but i can't say that i don't know right <coughs> that that again it's a combination of the of the things I think that make this a questionable situation. The pad, especially with uh, reading light, uh, is is going to be important because we spent a long time. Um, you were there. I mm -hmm. mean, uh, well, no, I guess that's what Josh was there. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, <coughs> you knew. <about> it. <laughs> but I mean, we spent a lot of time on that, going back and forth. Uh, and relocating that, I think, is a is a critical issue. Uh, I'd rather. I thought that tonight we would have something from Reading uh, Municipal Light uh, and the uh, Engineering Department, so that we could put that to bed at the same time. I, I don't have knowledge. I do appreciate uh, any other board members have any questions to raise, Robert? Well, the only one I, I have is di is dimension wise. I mean, uh, you, you had the electric tra or the transformers on an eight by eight pad previously. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to relocate those to where the condensers were before in that right. cutout in the wall. I call it the retaining wall. Yeah. But yet that doesn't look like it's an eight eight foot niche in there that's uh, in depth. It looks like it's only about three or four feet. It, it's going to and I can't large, recall what that was. It would probably have to be large to accommodate that. Yeah, okay. We really have to be cut into the... Cut into the that's uh, right. that's, the, that's, the that's what I would think. It would have to cut in even more. Yeah, I went through that. And maybe, right. maybe to back to the property line even. Uh, well, you, yeah, well, I'm not sure of the distance, but of course the... Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm looking at it now. You're, you're only a couple of three feet from the property line now. Yeah. yeah. So that that's... I, I would tend to agree that I would like to see... You know, we, we do see request number one here, the rear addition, 8 feet by 24 feet expanded to 8 feet by 35 feet. But I don't see anything in regards to items two and three there mm -hmm. on the plan. What What... You know where the new changes are. What what the new 
request is. You know, where's this eight by eight pad? Maybe it, maybe they don't need eight by eight anymore. I don't know, mm -hmm. but I think that's what we need. Well, on the the addition. Well, oh, right. So so the addition is spelled out on here. The other two aren't. Yeah, exactly. The, the addition, addition for the roof is, is the rear addition, rather the bike. Right, that that the, shows uh, up there, yep. and and then they say they're gonna. Re well, okay, addition even number two is taken care of, and saying they're gonna relocate the condensers from the utility pad to the roof onto the roof of the rear addition. Okay, right. so we know so, where those are going. Right. So yeah. But we don't know where this electrical transformer now. They say it's gonna go back to where the utility pad was. Into that cutout, into the well, retaining so, wall. So they're going to remove or eliminate the original concrete pad that they're going to put next to the dumpster area, which right. doesn't and, show up. And, and yeah, well, the pad's there, mm -hmm. right next to the dumpster area in the, in the lower left-hand corner. Well, oh, that's the that's the utility pad there. Right, that's going to be the, that's going to be removed. But where was the transformer pad over here? I don't see it. Mm. Yeah, that's here's no, the dumpster. No, it's not in the plan that we have. No, it's not. And here's, no, no, here's no. the right. utility so they're gonna So they're going to eliminate that one on the lower right. left-hand corner, Robert, but there's no proposed... On the lower left. The, where they're going to put it, is, there's not really a proposed... Oh, there's the utility pad Well, that's pad the right utility here. pad there. That's right. where the right. condensers were. Right. Right. But that's not big enough but to accommodate the, the 8x8. Right. 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 But that's, so where, that's where I'm assuming that's where it was going to go. That's where it says. So... Locate the transformer to... The utility pad right. built into the westerly wall. So our, I guess, so our, our inquiry tonight oh, yeah. is that what the applicant is asking is, <laughs> is this a major or minor yeah. modification? Yeah. Right. Uh, and so, uh, well, so I, I have two thoughts on that. I don't think we have enough information to make a determination as to whether or not it's major I or totally minor agree. at this time. Yeah. Right. Um, and rather, but in the interest of time management. If we have to make them come back anyway, do we call it major and post a hearing and just have them come back with those items? What yeah, do we the need? The form we do that. What do we need from them to make that so decision? So I'm just trying to make it time. Okay. Time yeah. So so we're going to make them come back with new information this next time because I think Brad, you see what is the information? We're, RMLD to weigh in on the location and the size of the pad that is sufficient. And we're a new pad. pad. I can look at it from a different perspective. You're being asked to determine whether or not the substance of the change, moving this there, doing this and doing that, is that a significant change to the total project or is it not? And I don't, by you, think we need to talk about the nitty gritty details of how it's going to be done. I don't think that impacts that the decision they're asking us to do. That's my view. Mm -hmm. I, and I, being a techie on this whole stuff, <laughs> I view what they want to do here as something that's not significant to the overall project. I disagree with you, sir. I well, think okay. it is. We have however, that, but. however, do we have a third option? Third option I'm thinking is, would you want to withdraw your request at this particular time to allow you to go back and get... All right, this was just another business request, so this wasn't a, a hearing. Yeah, this is not, not a so, hearing. So, it's a request. So, so yeah. just, I don't even think he needs to withdraw it. I think just we're going to have him, have him come back with the same application. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, we, we don't want to get through publication if we don't have to. That's no, I, but, but I, I was just going through the steps, Brad. Yeah. I, I don't think I want to do that either. I'm just thinking from a... A time management perspective, but I don't think that I'm not sure that any of us agree as we sit here, based upon the information we have in front of us, uh, that well, I, I don't know that we can make a determination as to whether or not this is major or minor. It seems to me that this is somewhat minor, presuming that RMLD yeah. agrees and uh, we see where it is. I think we can, I, I, you know, it's not going to impact the turn radius. It's not going to impact, you know, we want to make sure we condition for the noise protection on the roof. Uh, but those those don't seem significant enough to, con they, they're not large enough as to impact the, the, the areas that would trigger major modification, the scope, size, density, you know, it's not, that it's, it's not, I don't think it's major. So he's on his other, they're on his other business right now. So. He's got a couple of things to go get, and then come on back in when you get them. 
Uh, is it possible? What, what's your next meeting after your 40 B? Could we ask the week to be on your work agenda? On the 21st, I believe. the 21st? Believe. Well, the 21st is... The 21st is reserved. Reserved. But it's going to be quick. again. But right now, it's reserved. Nothing is on. Uh, well, let's think about that for a second, because from the date that the meeting opens on the 7th, you have a 15-day window to make some decisions. Right. And that's probably why that's they're holding why the 21st. That's why we're exactly what it is. Exactly. holding the 21st for that. Um, but I suppose, I, you know, and again, uh, I suppose, given that we don't know what's going to be on the 21st, that we could determine that he can come back in on the 21st and do this. Uh, or what's the next one after that? Then we're into what? Middle of April. April 4th. And that's not, that hasn't been reserved for anything. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yes, it has. That's, right we have two items. Oh, geez, okay. Geez, I, didn't, I haven't been looking at the schedule, I guess. Uh, all right. Well, but this ties this ties up everything in terms of moving. I'm mm. sure that, that that's the, the he's right. poised to proceed. No, now. right. I, I get it. Yeah. No, I, I get it. Time is time is money, and money is time. To bring up another point, I I think even though we're making a decision tonight on a substantial, insubstantial well, change, I, I we're think we're being asked to make that decision. Yeah. We're not. I think we to have to base decision. it on something and. We have to write up a decision on that. We have to do a writing on that. I don't know if the minutes of the meeting, I, or do they, John? Uh, you have to write up a decision. No, we'd have to, we'd have we to have write, to up, write the up the steps that we went through to make a determination. Insubstantial or substantial. Right. And then we have to reference it to a plan. So I think we need a plan Correct. with a revised date on it showing the changes. And we see one change, but we don't see where the transform is going. And we, and and we I would want like to make to sure see that, that we have yeah. notification from RMLD that they're okay right. with that, with right. the, the size and location of the uh, the new pad. And then, so 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 then the question is, and, and I wasn't planning to be busy in March with the <laughs> but apparently uh, with that whole 40B going on. Uh, but do we want to do on the 21st what we're doing on the 7th? Have them come in and be heard first. The, 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 the 21st is will, the, the 21st will likely not be a substantive 40B day. Yeah. But I can that's the, that's I, I don't know that because well, the decision has to be made that night by that night. Well, and if a decision is made, it's made and it's and the hearing is closed. I would imagine, if that's the case, or that or that hearing date. So you so you come in and convene the hearing on that night the 21st, make a determination regarding that 15-day deadline, or you could at the 7th say, uh, we will let you know if we're going to meet on that within that 15-day deadline and There's let that meeting pass. Too many balls in the air right, right now. Right, 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 right. So let's, let's suggest for a moment that both the 7th and the 21st are going to be substantive 40B content. On the 7th, we have them coming in to be heard to revise the plans on the accessory apartment permit. We're hopeful uh, that that won't take very long. And then on the 21st, he wants to come back in to be heard under other business uh, to satisfy the board that this is, well, to allow the board to have enough information in front of it to make a determination as to whether this is major or minor. Right. And the question is, for the board, uh, do we want to let them sneak, squeeze in on the 21st? Or make them come April 4th? Well, here's another issue. Um, you got a 40B that's sitting there if we're doing something definitive that night on Lakeview, then um, right after that we're taking another 40B with a substantive or a non-substantive change. There's two 40Bs on the plate the same night. Yeah, I know we... And I, yeah. I, 
Well, I mean, I, I know what this. Is, what is a, I mean, we typically don't like to schedule anything when we have a 40 B on, right? Because we want to devote that night to the public that's going to be there, correct? And the issue and the developer that's there right. that's that's on the agenda, correct? And so, but, but typically on a substantial or insubstantial change to a 40 B, that's a shot. <laughs> it should have been shot tonight, but it, it, should be, it isn't a public hearing. If we decide that it's a substantial change, then it has to be advertised in a public hearing. Right. So it goes relatively quick, I think. Well, right. We need enough information right. in front of us to, to make a simple determination as to whether on this, this is major or minor right. modification. On, on, on the major modification, he's got to post it, publish, and come back for a hearing. Right. Minor modification, we write it up that we why we've made that decision, yeah. and, and he goes back to the building department. And uh, and the developer and they right. work out how they need to do it. Well, if you're going to do it for the 21st, which is not going to be a big deal, it gives you time to go back and hopefully get the, the information that we need for that. Ooh. You can work with um, daytime government. Mm -hmm. Get the pro you. I think you know what. And the words after no, you can give right. us the you can give us the information all that time put a package together so it would be easy enough I just mm -hmm. I just have the concern of you're mixing because we have the clientele for 140 be in the room and they're not going to leave when they see you're going to have another one well this isn't posted but this isn't posted I know so that that's what I'm saying gonna, nobody's going to be here for the for the Bourbon Street 40 B nobody's going to be it's not posted I mean, it's posted as other business, but it's yeah. not. Yeah. It's not a hearing. Well, I mean, John, let, let, I, I, you know, it, it, I want to be fair to you as well because mm. we do, you know, we do have a lot. It's typically the board's policy that we don't put anything else exactly. on the night that we have a 40B because we want to give that due, give it, give it its due. Mm. So I guess the other option is is to give them April fourth. Well, I don't. Well. The question, since this, this is not a hearing, since you have uh, the opportunity uh, and the next meeting is the 7th, which is two weeks away, can we clarify this in two weeks? Well, he said he wanted the 21st. It might take him some time. Well, I don't I know. Thought, we, we can go to the 7th. I thought that's where you wanted to do the stretch it, but it could certainly have it for the 7th. So you want it? So I, I think what John's saying is you could advise us on the 7th how you stand on this one whether you would be prepared on the 21st. No, we could do it on oh, the 7th. Oh, you're saying have okay. them both come in on the 7th and you're loading up the 7th. Yeah, hey, if you it's can. It's not going to take a lot of engineering work to carve out uh, an area. Dealing with RMLD, I don't know. Well, I'm talking about this plan. Uh, uh, RMD's letter, I, we can't control how soon they respond. Right. I don't know the way that is, to uh, be honest. But if they take a month, that's beyond our control. But we'd like to at least get permission to put it there. If RMD says no, it's going to stay where it is, then yeah. obviously it's going to stay where it is. Okay. So if you could do it on the 7th, we'll have them to throw it to you in advance of that. And again, I defer to, we try to make those I know. lights. I know, but did, I mean. Light, because we try to keep the only do. thing on, and we've, we've made an exception for the for the special permit because we thought it was going to be quick. And that will make another, another we'll exception. Another exception. Have two items before this is the party be on that night. And there's well, going to be a room full of people well, waiting to hear. No, that's not necessarily We could do the one at the beginning and the one after we have gone through that. I know that that. I, the and timing, David, the David timing is everything. The first one, go home for an hour. For no, 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 I don't think. No, 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 you can't out. because I got to be here for that. Well, well, do I? For, Wait a minute. For, do I need? So if we if we continue this for another another hearing, that's not even a hearing. Uh, so, no, do, I, do I even have to be here? So if you schedule it on on a night that just the 40B was going to be on, yeah, and you wanted to do it one before, here the new 40B, one right. after. And I'm only here for the first one, for the special permit one. Then I take off. I'm not obviously not here. Right. The, for the yeah. No, you. I agree with you. You just you wouldn't vote on it, but we would have to have at least four members there voting right. on but it. But now that I now that I've been part of this part of the process, do I need to be here for that part of the process? Well, you've got someone who's not here who's going to be part exactly. of the process too. Well, he'd he'd have to. He'd, he'd have, have to, to listen to the. I think tape. he would. I think it's wrong to put them both on the agenda for. 
the East and Eaton one same night. I think you're right. It's not going to happen. We think it's going to happen in five minutes. <laughs> I, no, Just no, the way it's I, gone I tonight, right. it's not going to happen in five minutes. We've already, so gone against, we've already gone against our working policy that yeah. we don't put anything else on. Yeah. We'll, we'll be, we'll be playing that, 30 minutes. We'll be holding up the rest that, of the uh, whole that process. The plans for the, I think for it's the, wrong. I, I, say, I say continue it to the fourth. And, and, and make our lives a little bit easier, even though it's a bit of an inconvenience. Yeah. April fourth, we just we have two items on the agenda, and this is this is just a other business, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if, if it's a night that we've got other items on the agenda, then I would say let's continue them to the fourth. That way, we're not stressing about. I would agree. What's going to go on with the forty B? Any any other board members have any objection or concern with that? And then we'll ask Brad if he's okay with it. All right. The question that I would have for Brad is we got a 40B that's hung up now for another month. They can't do anything on the property. Well, I don't because think they, this is they, not that they can't do anything, Brad. This is not holding up construction. Uh, they, they can do the gutting they have to do. Yeah, I mean, there, there's all kinds of site prep. Okay, going oh, yeah. okay then I mean, they, they can keep themselves busy. This is not. Let me put it to you this way. If this was holding up the construction, it would be we could make a decision right now that this was a major modification. Yeah. These are, you know, these are. Yeah. You know, not impacting their ability to get work done yeah. on the property, right? Look at it that way. I would assume that. So, okay. so it's not like we're holding them. That's not like we're holding them up ter terribly from doing anything at the site if we make them come back on April fourth. Brad, we'd like to have you come back on April fourth. Can you All do right. that? All right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's have a motion. Well, I don't even. Well, no, 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 we, we don't even need a motion. Be, we don't, it's not a case. It's not, it's not a case. We don't need a motion. Okay, thank you. We'll thank see you on April 4th. Okay. okay. Thank you, Brad. Thanks for your patience. Things are just becoming more and more difficult all the time. Good night. Good night. All right, so we've got uh, we've got a couple of sets of minutes to go over. Well, that we hopefully should have gone over. Uh, right. The first one is the meeting of November 11th, 2017. It just blows my mind that last time we were here was November before Thanksgiving. You're right. Yeah, November 11th. Well, the 15th uh, was last year, we had. No, uh, November 1st. November 1st. November 1st of the minutes that we're looking at now is the second <laughs> set of minutes from November 15th, which would indicate that was the last time we were here. I, th I took a look at it. Nothing, nothing jumped out at me. Okay, this is November 1st, right? November 1st at, minutes. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, I, I did have... Uh, some comments uh, here in the uh, second page, Kristen. Uh, Kristen. Uh, middle of the page where the paragraph starts, Mr. Redfern mm -hmm. uh, mentioned he had other thoughts on the matter. Uh, if we could go to the th third sentence, and I think it should be Mr. Redfern said he believes the house was built prior to existing zoning, not zoning existing. To existing zoning, you can, if you could flip that. <coughs> and uh, you see, this is grandfatherly. And, and if we could get down to the next sentence where it says, and does not feel it. If we could just, instead of it, just put in the proposed request will create a new non conformity. I don't, I don't like the word it all the time. It, it, it. You, you start saying, what, what is it? So if we could just change that. Uh, and uh, if we could get down to the paragraph, about three paragraphs below that. Uh, Starts, paragraph starts, uh, Sai stated that there would be no doubt in his mind. That, and then it goes, Mr. Redfern commented that in his experience, tax maps are approximate and it would be best to use the certified plot plan for reference. And I think, uh, oh, I know. 
I had a question here on the third page uh, at the end of case number 10-04, Beacon Court, when we were discussing that. And then it goes on the last uh, paragraph. A member of the public who would come to the meeting asked the board why 23 King Street was first denied. Is, is that a mistake or? No. Is, she didn't sign in. Oh. Uh -huh. And she didn't speak up at the time. Okay. She was asking. She was asking whether it was denied or not. Or? She was asking why it was denied. I think it was more about the process that they have to be denied and then they come before the board. Okay. And then she was asking about how but I, she could get an application. Twenty-three King. The was, was there earlier on the I, agenda? That was a, that was a special permit that was granted on case 1711. Right, and I think we granted that special permit, so it wasn't denied. No, so so she came in and asked why he had to come before the board, why his his original application was denied, and I think we explained to him that the building inspector denied his application because he needed to come to the board to seek relief. And that if she had any questions, she could go because she, she was thinking of doing something similar or something along those oh, lines. Oh, okay. She came in at the very end. It was it was at, it was at the very end, and she was asking kind of what the procedure was, and so she had we, something similar planned. And I just directed her to. to do we even the, need that in the minutes then? Because it's got nothing to do with thing. Beacon Street. Well, but I, I suppose. In not. fact, I get confused, and when I read it, I'm no, saying, I, I, I suppose it doesn't. But. Um, Okay, I, I just brought it up. It, it, it is, David. It, it falls under basically what you were saying. So yeah, I think you know, it's your decision how you want to handle it. I, I don't. I mean, I don't care that it's there. Okay. Uh, but maybe we ought to set it off out of the Beacon Court. I mean, maybe just put you know miscellaneous okay. or something above it. Break it off and just put miscellaneous. Yeah. Miscellaneous question from the public. Or something. Yeah. How about that? Miscellaneous public inquiry. Yeah. How about that? That way it's set off and may not Yeah, because it, it did. I read it. Nothing. Well, no, I, yeah, no, I, and again, no. And then I'm going back and I said, well, we approved King Street. No, so yeah, she, was, she, wanted to, she wanted to do something, something different. Something similar to King uh, something Street. Something similar and how did she go about and it? How, did she, how could she go about doing it and why did he get denied and yeah. why did he have to come here? And, uh, that's what, why he get denied a building and permit and I, and I had think, to come to the right, board. Yeah, I think, you know, that's okay. the process and you should go talk to the building department. Blah, blah, okay. Blah. I think that was yep. trying to give her a quick and easy answer. All right, any other questions, comments about those minutes? Do. I'm all set. Everybody with okay with them? Yep. All right, we'll take a motion for the November 1st minutes as amended. So move to accept the minutes of uh, November 1st, uh, 2017 as amended this evening. Second. Second. Robert, all those in favor? Five zero zero. All right, on to the minutes of November 15th. Okay. And again, I, I printed these out and went through them today, and I had a couple comments in here, more grammatical than anything uh, on them. Uh, first page, uh, well, uh, case number 1712, third paragraph, second sentence, uh, create an outdoor space for their four-year-old son. That is non-verbal. I, I think we should put who in there instead of that. Yeah, it's, okay. it, it is a person, so who. And then I notice in the, it's just a spelling error on this aquifer in a number of areas. Yeah, you, you use the kid's aquifer. <laughs> the, or the, the moisturizer, lotion, aquifer. A-Q-U-I-F-E-R. It's an I-F-E-R? A-Q-U-I-F-E-R. It, it's, you know. <laughs> a, a, wait a minute. Yeah. A-C-Q-U-I-F-E-R. A, no. Go. Index of your zoning bylaws right. has has it. It's Aquifer Protection it, District. Yeah. Right. However, get it it's from spelled, that. however it's spelled in the bylaw. Yeah, however it's spelled in the bylaw. <laughs> we have that, and I think that it, that happened there. I, th I had it in three places, so we yeah. can catch right. that. So just go, yeah, go back through and spell check it. And uh, I think that was it, pretty much. Uh, I actually, that. well, I was just looking at these. Found one <laughs> on page two. Uh, one, two, three, four, fifth paragraph down, spell out his last name. It says Mr. K. Mr. K. Oh, yeah. Like 
Yeah. Good one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sorry, as I was just looking through this, I just want to... All right, so in the vote section on page three, we have granting a variance and then withdrawal of a variance for the same case. Mm -hmm. In the withdrawal, the paragraph before it explains what that what the conversation was with regard to, he he withdrew his variance with regard to exceeding the lot coverage in the aquifer protection area right so is is that vote clear enough that that's what we were he was withdrawing grant a withdrawal for a variance yeah that okay a, all right good i'm good then i have nothing further yeah. all right anybody else have any questions on the minutes no. Motion to approve as, do we amend them at all? As amended. As amended. November 5th. Yeah. yeah. I'll make a motion that we approve the uh, minutes of uh, November 15th, 2017 as amended. Second? Second. I sigh. Any discussion? Discussion? No? All those in favor? Five zero zero. All right. Uh... We don't have anything else on the agenda tonight, so I will take a motion to adjourn. So moved. My side, we have a second? Second. Second by Nick. All those in favor? Five zero zero. We are adjourned. Thanks everybody. Okay.